Fox News alert. Critics are slamming Major League Baseball and woke companies caving to far-left Democrats' demands after the MLB said it would move its all-star game from Atlanta to protest Georgia's new voting law. The CEOs of Coca-Cola and Delta are also condemning the law after liberal activists pressured the companies. Georgia officials estimate that the MLB's decision to move the game will cost the state $100 million in tourism revenue. Governor Brian Kemp warning this is far from just a Georgia problem. Watch. Georgians and all Americans should know what this decision means. It means cancel culture and partisan activists are coming for your business. They're coming for your game or event in your hometown. And they're coming to cancel everything from sports to how you make a living. You are watching Outnumbered. I'm Emily Campagno. Here today, host of Kennedy on Fox Business, Kennedy, Fox Nation host Tommy Lahren, senior editor of The Federalist and Fox News contributor Molly Hemingway, and joining us today, town hall political editor and host of The Guy Benson Show on Fox News Radio, Guy Benson. Welcome to you all. Guy Benson, I'd Ooh, like hey. to start with you on this. Now, you heard in the intro that retracting the All-Star Game out of Georgia is estimated to cost $100 million in local revenue for those businesses. Now, it's estimated that almost 50 percent of black and brown owned businesses in America have closed for good. And we know that the population of Atlanta is about 55 percent black American, in Savannah, 54 percent, and in Augusta, where the upcoming masters are being held, that black population is also 55 percent. So my question, Guy, is how is a boycott over purported black and brown voter disenfranchisement that disproportionately affects negatively black and brown owned businesses, how is that a good idea? Well, of course, it's a terrible idea. And frankly, it's a bunch of lies about disenfranchisement and how this is going to restrict voting and the whole parade of horribles that we've heard about from the usual suspects. The overwhelming majority of it is baseless and completely untrue and actually pretty easily refutable if people are remotely interested in the facts. Apparently, Major League Baseball not terribly interested in the facts. Neither are some of these CEOs who are preening for a certain audience. But I do find it interesting, Emily, to your point about boycotts. A bunch of Georgia Democrats, and they influenced, of course, the president, who's been lying very aggressively and repeatedly about this law, they've been shouting as loudly as they can, bellowing the term Jim Crow over and over and over again. It is a grotesque misappropriation of history. It has no resemblance to what's actually in this law, but they've been saying it at the top of their lungs for about a month, and now some people ignorant people or scared people are reacting accordingly, and the same Georgia Democrats who've been demagoguing endlessly are turning, turning around and saying, well, hang on, we didn't really mean it quite that way. Please don't boycott our state, our city, our constituents. You can't have it both ways. This economic harm directly can be laid at the feet of the Democrats who have been lying about this, from their senators to Stacey Abrams, who wants to be governor. They can claim they don't like the boycotts. They cause the boycotts by their lying. Kennedy and the hypocrisy by these CEOs is pretty sickening, especially with regard to China. We know that the CEOs of Apple and Coca-Cola legislated or lobbied, excuse me, against legislation that would that would prevent manufacturing from China being imported to the U.S. that used forced labor. So where was their soapbox and social justice barometer then? Yes, they there. There's a real disparity when it comes to about caring. Uh, about human beings, because it, that's what it should boil down to, you know, people being treated well and fairly, and that's not what this is. And we have some breaking news. Texas Governor Greg Abbott has sent a letter to the Texas Rangers, uh, the, the baseball franchise there, that he is not going to throw out uh, the first pitch at their home game, and he's sort of boycotting the boycott, and he's sending a message that if this organization, MLB, is going to become a, a political arm of the DNC, then he is not going to participate in this, trying to send a clear message. So the question is, is it time for conservatives, as the Wall Street Journal has suggested in their opinion piece, is it time for conservatives to uh, pick up the, the boycott mantle the way liberals have been for quite some time? It gets exhausting. You have to keep a pretty long list 
it's hard to keep track of who you're supposed to hate. The whole thing becomes incredibly <laughs> ridiculous, and the people who are the most vociferous against uh, these uh, Georgia election changes can't point out specifically what parts of the law are the most harmful. Uh, and these, these are such broad allegations, and it just goes to show you that people can act like lemmings and get on board the woke train without doing any actual research, which in the end, as you and Guy have both pointed out, is incredibly harmful. Molly, to Guy's point, bringing up the president, we have the president calling to punish citizens for economic punishment for passing lawful legislation. Your thoughts on that? I think that's the first time in American history that an American president has called for economic warfare against a state that dutifully passed legislation to secure, to do anything, but in this case, to secure elections. If Republicans and other Americans are going to be called racist for trying to have free and fair elections, they actually should pass legislation that, that has some meat to it. This Georgia legislation, if there's any scandal to it, is that it's weak, weak does not do enough to secure elections. In this country, if you want to have a republic, you need to have confidence in elections. Ideally, everybody should be voting on the same day, in the same manner, and have those, counts, have those votes tabulated on that same day. We're spreading election day out into a lengthy season where people aren't having appropriate oversight of their ballots. They don't really know who's counting them or how they're being counted. That is no way to run a country. And so that's a big enough problem as it is, but because of Joe Biden calling for economic economic warfare against a state, you now have corporations doing the bidding of the president and other Democrats in a way that is really damaging and divisive to the country. Major League Baseball, which I would have counted myself as a big time fan of until a few days ago, doesn't really have the luxury of being able to turn off half the country. This is a this is a game where they're having trouble retaining fans, where they're having trouble gaining new fans because of how expensive it is and how long the games are. And to say that half the country or more who want to have free and fair elections are racist is a despicable smear. Major League Baseball should renounce the commissioner who did this. They should immediately change what they're doing if they want to have a future. And other corporations should be warned that by behaving this way, you've given people no option but to boycott. And Tommy, to Kennedy's point about the political arm and Molly's point about it really being used as this instrument, how is it that the CEOs of these corporations that the left used to love to hate, they are now not only auditors for some reason of legislation, but they're also the largest social lobbyists going on that apparently are effective? Yeah, here's a couple of things there. You know, Delta CEO coming out against his voting rights bill because it, it requires an ID to vote. Again, uh, something that should be just commonplace and should be in every state anyway. But I'm pretty sure the last time I boarded a Delta Airlines flight, I had to show identification. So that's interesting. Same thing with MLB. If you go to Will Call to pick up tickets, you have to show an ID. So the hypocrisy here is amazing. But I want to go back to the MLB for a moment as well. You know, they're expanding their presence in China, which I find is I incredible considering that they are so against this voting bill in Georgia because they're expanding their presence in China, which, as we know, is a communist regime that doesn't give their people any rights, really, if we want to boil it down. So MLB has a lot to answer for. But I want to go back here to, to talking about MLB. You know, baseball is, is a great American sport. There are so many baseball players that are conservative, that are holding their tongue right now, not saying anything. And I would encourage those conservatives, whether be, they be in major league sports, whether they be in Hollywood and entertainment, now is the time for you to speak up because the reason that this is happening is because all of you are being so quiet you are going along to get along you want to play nice in the locker room you are letting the minority be your voice you're sitting back as part of a players association and you're saying yeah this sounds good same thing last year with the BLM walk-offs and they had to cancel games and the boycotts this is going on long enough if you're a conservative if you're an independent or you're just a rational human being in sports in entertainment in music in Hollywood now is the time to stand up and say enough is enough more more people will follow your lead, but somebody has to be brave and, bold, brave and bold enough to start it. And it remains to be seen whether, in fact, the Masters coming up being held in Augusta, Georgia, for golf, whether that will be warmly received or whether that will be yanked as well.